Hello again, fellow Mystery Files. Today I continue my ranking of every Miss Silver novel written by Patricia Wentworth, with this video covering the middle third books ranked numbers 21 through 11. And this portion is something of a mixed bag. I do still have some mediocre ones in here before I get to, into the ones with a little more merit to them. As always, there may be spoilers ahead, but I will try to keep them to a minimum. And before I begin, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like this video to keep up to date. Continuing on with number 21, and we're still in the lackluster titles here, is Ladder End. And this one I thought had a nice twist to it, which is something these books rarely, if ever, possess. Lois Ladder is warned by a psychic to beware of poison, advice she laughs off until she is murdered by poison. And this is really the first book I've talked about in the series where I think the investigation portions are good. Lois was poisoned in such a way that doesn't really appear anyone could have done it, and there's a lot of work regarding the movements of people and their teacups and all of that. I think there's a nice twist where we learn that Lois actually committed suicide and wasn't murdered. I think Ladder End is a step up from the novels in part one, but I didn't put it any higher because this book does drag a lot, particularly in the beginning, before anything of note really happens, but throughout most of the novel as well, and Miss Silver is absent for large portions of this book, and the characters are generally very flat, but it is the decent mechanics that propel Ladder End this high to number 21. At number 20 is one that I wanted to rank higher because I actually enjoyed reading this one, but it is very flawed, and that is Vanishing Point. And this book has several different plot lines in it that don't really ever meet. And we have the stuff with Jenny faking her injuries so she doesn't have to go to school. We have the jewel heist and we have the disappearances of the two housemaids a year apart, which to be fair is the main storyline and does connect with the others at some point. And then we have whatever Miss Silver was doing, which honestly didn't seem like she even knew what to investigate because the plot was very scattered. It didn't seem like she ever discovered anything useful or even knew how to go about her work. But I like I said, I did enjoy reading this book, which is enough to put it this high. I was intrigued by the disappearances of the maids, and I found the idea of smuggling jewels in the bodies of large bugs to be unique. But what really puts Vanishing Point this low in this lackluster category is the ending. Miss Silver does not solve this case. She just happens to overhear two conspirators spill all the details in a very, very lengthy conversation. I use this moment as one of my pet peeves, where these people just talk about about everything they did seemingly for no reason, and I, I just hate this. It was a huge letdown and deprived the reader of seeing the detective actively solve the murders, so Vanishing Point comes in here at number 20. Number 19, and I think with this one, we're moving into the books to have a little higher quality to them. I, I don't think these are lackluster, but if I'm being honest, had another author wrote these books, they would be well below average on their respective lists, instead of being just about average on this ranking. But at number 19 is the very first Miss Silver novel, Grey Mask. And this one is a thriller slash mystery, and is a decentish thriller for one written by a mystery novelist. Charles Moray comes home one evening to find a secret cabal conducting something sinister in his abandoned house. And there really isn't a murder in this one, although there are a few attempts on various people's lives. But unlike Lonesome Road, I didn't think a murder was needed here. The overall mystery was decently strong, strong enough to sustain a full-length novel. Some of the characters are annoying, in particular Margot Standing who is just an incredible dolt. It really stretches credulity at times. And I think Grey Mask benefits from being the first in the series, where normally I find the first books to be average at best, but because Patricia Wentworth's books are all mostly the same, I didn't really have the knowledge of how Grey Mask would play out. And to be fair, it does play out differently than the most other Miss Silver novels. The identity of Grey Mask is decent. There really is only one person it can be, but I think the reveal is effective enough. The mores are mentioned so many times in future novels, and this case is referred to a lot, so this book is of some importance to the series. And I think there are a few good tricks here and there, nothing major, however, but Marco's disappearance toward the end of the novel, really being an escape, was intriguing, and one that I didn't see coming. The biggest knock against Grey Mask for me is definitely the ending, where Miss Silver just completely dismisses the fact that Charles and Margaret have suddenly vanished and he, she claims there aren't in any danger when in fact they're in very much danger i mean they're trapped in some 
brick wall basement about to suffocate to death and Miss Silver just doesn't care. In general, I felt like Miss Silver was extraneous here, which is a shame since this is her first appearance and I was hoping it would be a particularly strong one. Grey Mask does have some merit to it, but it is largely flawed, so it comes in here at number 19. At number 18 is another one that was fine, and that is The Silent Pool. And this is another one that I don't have many problems with, but nothing really to commend it either. It held my attention the entire time. The murderer was somewhat obvious, but was a character that really needed to be in it more. Our victim is another one of these accidental victims, which is something Patricia Wentworth does over and over again. Typically, a mystery novel uses this as a red herring where we find out the accidental victim was the intended target all along, but in Miss Silver novels, that's pretty much always the case. Uh, the Silent Pool plays out largely the same as always, and Miss Silver's client isn't too helpful to her. We have the usual cast of stock characters. I, I do think this one has a little more activity than the others I've talked about thus far. I have very little to talk about with this one. It's pretty much run of the mill, but not like so run of the mill that it ranks lower so it comes in here at number 18 and starting from number 17 i think i'm moving up into the books that i'm more positive than negative on but even still i think most of these books are heavily flawed this is the middle of the list but i would still consider these to be well below average books if they were written by other authors and at number 17 is the catherine wheel and this is another that Patricia Wentworth really seemed to love because it's mentioned a lot in future books. I think for the most part, this book was decent. It's another one of these long lost heiress books with the heiress comes into some money or has the potential to do so. There are a bunch of other new heirs and we spent a lot of time going over this family tree that was very confusing and turned out to be completely irrelevant. I think there were some intriguing aspects to the Catherine Wheel, however. Unfortunately, none of it really went anywhere. I thought there might be some interest with the sh Will shenanigans, but there was nothing there. And the characters were mostly fine. They were a little more vibrant than usual, but still largely static, static stock characters. The biggest issue I had is that this one breaks the rules of detective fiction and that it has more than one hidden passage, but I'm willing to overlook that somewhat because there is a trick with this that I liked. Multiple people talk about hidden passages ways, but the trick is that they're actually talking about two different passageways unbeknownst to everyone else. So I think that's fine because it is something of a puzzle, but I did find the talk of hidden passageways to be just like really cliche and unimaginative and it really swamped the whole novel. So the Catherine Wheel comes in here at number 17. At number 16 is a novel that I did have originally much higher on the list, but I moved it down quite a bit actually, and that is Wicked Uncle, also called Spotlight. And I think as I read more and more Miss Silver novels, this one just kept slipping my mind, which to me is an indicator that it doesn't deserve to be much higher. The story started off strong with this young woman who takes a job for a woman whose ex-husband is actually her long-lost Wicked Uncle who had abandoned her aunt. There is some parlor game fun involving glow-in-the-dark paint when the murder of said wicked uncle happens, but unfortunately this all led to nowhere. It was also very difficult to follow what was going on with the glowing paint, and it just didn't lead to anywhere interesting. We have another of these possibly unstable middle-aged women controlled by her brother, which is a duo we see quite a bit, I and mean, we just saw it in the Catherine Wheel as well. And Miss Silver um, in uh, Patricia Wentworth just really seemed to like this dynamic. But even by this point, which is chronologically the book number 12 of 32, it was used quite a bit. And the murderer was fairly predictable. And this is another of those books where Miss Silver just seems to know things without any explanation over the course of her investigation. And she just seems to do like really random things and doesn't even come to any like solid conclusions at times. Wicked Uncle does have some notable merit to it, but it falls largely flat for me. So it comes in here at number 16. At number 15, I have the final Miss Silver novel, The Girl in the Cellar. And this one is like the rare book that felt very different from the norm. I think Patricia Wentworth establishes a very sinister, creepy environment in this one, where we begin with Anne, and I'm using air quotes here, having amnesia and finding a dead girl in the cellar whose body later disappears. We were left in the dark for most of this book of what exactly is happening. There seems to be some kind of like international intrigue surrounding Anne's possible husband. 
Jim, but he won't say anything. We also have a number of mysterious men who show up. And I think this one is very well written. I was kept in suspense for the entire novel. It felt like a breath of fresh air after reading 31 very similar books from Patricia Wentworth. The reason why I don't have it higher is because I think the plot left a lot to be desired. Because Anne has no memory, this case is rendered unsolvable for the most part, which is unfortunate. And the titular girl in the cellar seems to fall by the wayside for the middle portion of this book. The ending is also very overdramatic, so while I think The Girl in the Cellar feels like a decent book, I think the plot needed more substance for it to rise on this ranking, so it comes in here towards the middle at number 15. At number 14, I have a novel that I originally had as high as number 2 before I knocked it down considerably when I revised my list, and I did so for a very specific reason, and that is The Benevent Treasure. And I will say, I enjoyed this story a lot. It's one of those long-lost heiress stories where our heroine is essentially adopted by two rich aunts who inherited the family fortune. However, only one of these aunts, Aunt Kara, actually inherited the money, and she is under the control of her sister, Olivia. Candida, the niece here, will inherit if Kara dies. So naturally there are attempts on Candida's life, but she escapes. And Candida is much smarter than the typical heroine in a Miss Silver novel, which I appreciated. I also thought this story was fantastic. Miss Kara does die under suspicious circumstances, and Miss Olivia, the controlling hand, really just exposes herself as an evil presence. I think of all the villains in Miss Silver novels, Olivia Benevent is probably the most memorable for me. I didn't have to look up her name, which I did have to do with several other characters when I was making this list. But the reason why I knocked the Benevent treasure down down is because we're not told what happened here. We get a very meager, bare-bones solution that does not qualify as a reveal for me. Miss Silver even admits that she doesn't even know what happened, and we could assume Miss Kara died accidentally, but then we have a lot of unknowns left about like what she was doing when she died, who moved her body, what happened to the first male secretary the sisters had whose body is found, and then it ends on like this really strange note where the butler just dies and we're giving no explanation as to how or why or what he did. Normally a lack of a solution would be an automatic last place for me. It's not acceptable but I reconsider that here specifically for this list because so many of these Miss Silver novels are just not good that it felt wrong to place a novel I liked until the end below something like Lonesome Road. So I disregarded that rule here and I had this one at number two but then I thought again and I decided that this book didn't need to be knocked down because of the ending. It's not acceptable. So I brought it down quite a bit, though not nearly as low as I would have if this book been in some other author's collection, but I did place the Benevent treasure here at number 14. And at number 13 is sort of the opposite situation in that this is a book I originally ranked much lower and I moved it up quite a bit, and that is The Braiding Collection, also published as Mr. Braiding's Collection. And this is one of the few Miss Silver novels that does contain a traditional puzzle mystery plot to solve. However, this puzzle was just so blatantly obvious, which is why I had to lower it to begin with, but I did decide that the puzzle was at least something to commend, so I bumped it up the ranking. The plot involves a murderer very obviously impersonating the victim on the phone after he's dead to throw off the time of death and establish alibis, and it's just so apparent what's happening in the scene, and we even get like a pretty blatant line of narration where it stated that the secretary thought it didn't quite sound like Mr. Braiding. It's not well executed or even original by this point in time. Other than that, I did find some humor in this book regarding the ugly woman who wants to be painted. I thought the characters were a bit stronger than usual, so I do think number 13 is the appropriate place for the Braiding collection. At number 12 is another novel that seemed pretty generic for Miss Silver, but I felt it was stronger than most in every other aspect, and that is Out of the Past. Very similar plot to other novels. I mean, we have a woman who is married, but her ex-fiance comes back and is murdered, and I just found this novel to have an increased amount of intrigue about it. There were a lot of suspicious characters who were decently developed, more so than usual, and the solution isn't really that obvious, even though it does turn out to be the same kind of character Patricia Wentworth typically uses. It just simply wasn't as foretold or obvious as usual. Miss Silver is really at her best here. She never pulls information out of nowhere, and this is a rare book where the reader learns the information at the same time Miss Silver does. Typically, the reader knows more than the characters in the book in these stories. 
This one held my attention the entire length of the novel, and it was decently written. I fo it followed a good pattern of storytelling where new information piles on the old. The reason why I don't have this one higher is because it doesn't do anything special. It doesn't excel in any one area, and while there are books higher on this one that have some flaws, I think those books do the things they do well better than Out of the Past does. Out of the Past is just a typical Miss Silver novel, but elevated all around, so it comes in at number 12. And at number 11, the final book I will talk about in this video is a rather important one, and that is Eternity Ring. And this is essentially Frank Abbott's book. We learned so much about him and his family in this novel, and many of the characters are relatives of his. Because of this novel, we actually know more about Frank Abbott than Miss Silver across the entire series. I think Eternity Ring is a pretty decent novel. It's a country village mystery, and it comes with all the usual bits of country village mystery typically does. We have the local folklore, the country manners, the large families, village life, and all that. The action mainly surrounds Frank's cousin Cicely and her estrangement from her husband Grant, although the murderer is of a young woman found in the woods. And I think this one plays out more like a traditional mystery novel where all the suspects fall under suspicion in turn, the evidence piles up, etc. I think Miss Silver is pretty good here where she actually uses her skills to her best ability and plays up the nice old lady bit a lot here, which I think is more effective for her than her openly investigating as an inquiry agent. I think there is an argument to be made that Eternity Ring should be in the top 10, but the reason why I left it at number 11 is because the solution is sort of strange, where we learned Grant had actually come across the murderer much earlier in the novel than was known, and he just didn't say anything for literally no reason. Like, he wasn't trying to shield this person or anything, and he even outright says he didn't say anything because no one asked him. And this felt like it was just awfully convenient to extend the novel, so Eternity Ring fell short or the top 10 here at number 11. And that's it for today. Next week, I conclude my ranking of all the Miss Silver novels with the top 10, so stay tuned for that. And if you're just discovering this channel, make sure you check out some of my past videos, and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, Mystery Files.